by gosh by golly. No, it's not time for mistletoe and holly, but it's time for me to become overly dramatic. I have something in the back of my truck I can't wait to show you. It is one of my best finds of all time. Hold on to your barca loungers. I'll be right back. Hello again everyone and thanks for joining me back in the old curiosity shop. Now I promised you an amazing find in the back of my truck and I'm going to show you that in just a minute. If you peek over my shoulder you might get a hint of the top of it. I promise you it's going to be phenomenal so stay tuned. But let me show you first what I found at the flea market today. Now I slept in meaning instead of getting up at 4.30, I got up at 6 o'clock, and I didn't really get to the flea market uh, until much later than I normally do, but there were still treasures to be found. Take a look at this wonderful box, and uh, I'm going to actually have to put this back on to preserve it, but we can see it says uh, patio lights and um, lanterns, and there we can see a little bit of the graphic on there. Uh, most of the box is pretty gone, or pretty pretty much torn up, but you can still see just a little bit of it. And if we turn it this way, you'll see uh, the lanterns, the lights are all in there. These are great big Japanese light bulbs, can you see? There are supposed to be ten in the box. There are only nine, so a little bit of digging around and we could find a, uh, a tenth one. To complete the set. Uh, these are old. They probably date to um, before the Second World War. They're very uh, unique and they're worth some money. Uh, now you say, do they work? I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Well, it kind of matters. I will test them later. But even if they don't work, there's still value to these old light bulbs. And you can see how huge they are. All hand, paint, all hand painted and made in Japan. So I'll be taking these inside and testing them. Okay. Um, I paid $20 for this box. Yes, I did. Now let's put this right up here. And then... I went to a table where everything was one dollar, so I paid two dollars. Here's an ice crusher. Really, <clears throat> excuse me, this can crush anything that you want it to, uh, to actually crush. I don't know, well I can't get the top off just yet. The, the wooden piece is original and they came in the bottom and you can see there's the crusher there. Uh, with a blade on it. So really just not just for ice. You can crush all kinds of things in here uh, for food prep. So that's probably from the 1940s. Somebody's pulling in next to me in the parking lot and they're gonna see me sitting here talking to myself. Uh, and then a mid-century uh, nut grinder. Um, this one is probably from the 1960s. My mother actually has this identical one in her kitchen cabinet right now that she's been using her entire life. So I normally see the ones from the Depression era. It's nice to find one from the, the mid-century era. Okay, now everything that I'm going to show you I paid $15 for, for the lot. I just went around to the man's table and picked up different things, took him up, and he said 15 bucks for all of it. So we'll start off with a blue opalescent Fenton dish. Hobnail. And then from the Depression era, the 40s, here's a nice trivet. 
or hot plate, I guess. Made of pottery. It's got a nice 1940s design to this. And this is actually made by the Lee Pottery, L-E-I-G-H, Lee Pottery Company. They did a lot of this work for uh, ooh, Farber wear, and you'd find, you know, the chrome carrying cases with them. Not cases, you know what I mean. And you know, I bought all that crackle glass yesterday, $5 each. And I said, mm, I'll find some more. Well, I'm going to be putting a whole collection together. So now this is my fourth piece. Um, and again, this was all bundled up into the $15 for the whole lot. There's two more pieces in the $15 lot. Uh, a single bookend, which is fantastic. And I uh, don't know who made this one, but it's adorable. Some wonderful uh, books. We've got just all the 1930s icons are here. The, gal the, the sailing ship, right? Uh, not necessarily old Ironsides, but the old Ironsides print was so popular. And uh, sort of Spanish galleon type ships were popular too in the 1930s. And we all know That's probably the most popular breed of dog in the 1930s and 40s. So it's just that one single bookend there. Uh, and it's a small one. I like this. And I don't mind buying single bookends. And then this, I love it. All right, how many of you recognize that trade symbol right there? Mm-hmm. Is it Bon Ami? No. Look again. Yes, you said it, Dutch cleanser. Now, what's so funny about this is we see the top. This is made of tin or something, and uh, it's in that black and cream sort of depression era, 1930s, 40s. And the bottom, of course, comes right off. The bottom comes right off. The bottom does not come right off. Okay. And so we can, listen, if you want to sprinkle your Dutch cleanser in style, this is just for you. You get your little can of uh, Dutch cleanser and put it inside of that. And then this can sit out on your kitchen sink. It's pretty remarkable, isn't it? It makes the, the can of cleanser probably much more attractive and also it keeps it from getting wet. You know, if you're, if you're using cleanser in the bathroom or the kitchen, your hands are wet. Uh, in here it's gonna keep it nice and dry I had to buy that so that's one two three four five items for $15 okay now um, I think there might be something else I want to show you okay I shall keep you in suspense no longer let's go see what's in the back of my truck on the count of three one, two, three. <gasps> Did you just suck the dust off of your television set into your mouth? You know you did. Look how big my truck is. Look how big that dollhouse is. This dollhouse is incredible. Oh my goodness, let's talk about it. First of all, it dates to the 1920s. Could be as late as 1930. Could be as early as 1920. It's handmade, and the person who built this knew what they were doing. They did a fantastic job. And it's basically attic fresh and untouched. This has just come out of a Philadelphia attic. You know these great big old Victorian homes, you had space to have dollhouses like this for your children, and who was the lucky child that played with this? I love the colors, I love the design, Let's take a look at the outside. And I'll tell you what, this thing weighs about 75 pounds. It's massive. Oh, and by the way, you can see it is completely electrified. Now that's some electric wire that's gonna have to be replaced. Take a look at the finish. This is real glass on these windows. They've covered it in this wonderful 
uh, stucco type finish which was popular at that time look at how dirty it is and how the paint is starting to sort of alligator the way it does in an old house and just look at the detail this is not something that was bought in a store and I wonder if the person who made this was actually in the building trade now there's some damage and we'll talk about the damage and <laughs> wait do you see the inside you're gonna flip look there's the bathroom oh my goodness couldn't you just move in right now all right solid wood let me just be quiet because I can run my mouth on and on and on about this thing well you know I'm not gonna be that quiet all right let's talk about any of the damage on the front here is a little green tile that's up here that's missing from the chimney big deal the main damage is we can see there was a, uh, a porch overhang here so we have a hint of the of the bracket that held the porch roof it would have been here as well so there would have been a little roof here and a pole that came up to hold the roof on and probably um, a railing here anybody with a little bit of talent oh and we can see there was a railing here all right so we could rebuild that with some old wood some old materials there's a crack in the glass in the front door I'm not too upset about that the finish is unbelievable if you took a paintbrush to this you would actually be just uh, committing just a horrible crime you got to leave it just the way it is I'll get the dust off of it but there's no way this should ever be repainted or altered in any way go over here to the side this thing is massive now I will go ahead and tell you there was no furniture that's completely gone uh, and so trying to put together furniture for this it can be done there was some show and hut furniture made in the 1920s that would actually be about the right scale for this at 1920s and 30s and it would look pretty good in there let's turn the thing around you're going to oh, all right everybody take a bathroom break and then come right back now I will admit the interior really does kind of feel like a haunted house <laughs> there are a few areas of loss here on the inside as well and I'll talk about that and we have a mouse a mice was living in here and he he sort of pooped and peed all over the place but we can deal with that let's start downstairs first oh I hope this is turning out okay all right there's the front door and you can see the light fixtures hanging from the ceiling and the arched doorway into the dining room there's some old paper on here to simulate wood on the walls we've got some wonderful old carpeting now the staircase has damage we're gonna have to rebuild some of it but uh, there's enough of it here to give me the idea of how it looked originally so I have to do a little bit of restoration there part of the foundation is missing here that's no big deal well let's go into the dining room oh my goodness ceiling light fixture we can see where there was a portrait on the wall there's actually a nail there we even have little uh, ringlets for curtain rods now we pass through the dining room into the kitchen and look at the linoleum <laughs> this really looks uh, this helps us as well this is a very 19 uh, 20s maybe 1930s style of uh, kitchen floor and there's a ceiling fixture as well the windows are glass look at the molding and notice the kitchen colors what are they cream and green just what we would expect oh my goodness smells like mouse pee but we'll get that cleaned up 
I'm gonna save my favorite room until the end. So let's go up the staircase now into the upper part of the house. Okay, here's the upstairs hallway with a lamp uh, light fixture on the uh, ceiling, some type of artwork there on the wall. And we'll pass into the uh, bathroom. Now there's one piece of wood missing right here. There's a support missing here, which I can replace. And there's one support here that's broken off. I can replace that. That'll complete these, door these, uh, these doorways. The bathroom is tiled in black and green, as we would expect, even the ceiling. And we, again, we have a place for a light fixture. And can you see the little ringlets around the windows for the curtain rods? The detail on this is just stunning. Now we'll go into a bedroom. The carpet is torn. I'm not going to replace it. Look at the old wallpaper. Boy, she needs to get in here and clean the windows. Or he. Yes, he or she needs to get in here and clean the windows. All right, everybody should share in the housework. And again, we have a place for a light bulb on the ceiling. Look at the finish, the surface. This is to die for, folks. Finding something like this in this condition. Let's move on to the second bedroom at the top of the staircase. And here it is with the same wonderful carpet. Lots of mouse poop. Beautiful wallpaper. Light fixture from the ceiling. Nice windows. We're going to go back downstairs now and into the front parlor, which is absolutely amazing. Ready for this? Oh, let me get my old bones down here. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. I know you're all just like saying, I cannot believe this. You can't believe it. Look through to the doorway, the front door. We have crown molding, beautiful arches on the door. Look at the wood paneling on the uh, on the walls. I love how a little bead was used as the finial here on the newel post. I love that. Here we have the remnant of a floor lamp. Now we know that because we have one floor lamp. And we know this is the remnant of a floor lamp because we've got one existing floor lamp uh, back here. You can see here. I'm going to have to do some work on that. Look at the tile fireplace. There's even a metal grate down in the fireplace. I don't know how well you can see it. We have an animal head over the fireplace. They've even done the stucco there on the uh, interior chimney. The windows are beautiful. See the little ring, ring, uh, ringlets here <laughs> uh, to hang your curtain rods. Can you believe this? I know I keep going in and out of focus. Not easy to film. stand back up. Wow. What a find. What a find. Sometimes you just don't know what else to say, but wow. I am so glad that I was able to find this thing. Uh, I paid $49 for it. Now, is it the most valuable thing I've ever found? No. But what's incredible to me is that we're looking at a dollhouse that's mm, at least 90 years old. Obviously handmade. Who knows who played with it? But the state of preservation is unbelievable. Those surfaces are untouched. 
from when that was made in old circa 1925 or so and I'm not a dollhouse collector I don't know much about it I do know a little bit about dollhouse furniture and my former college roommate knows a lot about doll houses and dollhouse furniture and whatnot. He is going to simply have a fit. What is it worth? I don't know. I'm certain that you're going to have to start off at about 500 bucks for me to sell it. Um, because it's unique. If you're a dollhouse collector, you're going to simply flip over that because of its originality and the condition that it's in. So I think it's amazing. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. I want to keep it and maybe spend some time searching for 1930s, 20s, 30s uh, furniture to put in it. Uh, or maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll make furniture. But thanks for watching and enjoying it. I am going to take a lot of interior photographs and maybe do a little slideshow of some of the interiors. Uh, but it was just a delight to find. This is why we get up at 4 o'clock in, in the morning. Although I slept in today until 6, maybe I should start sleeping in. Ugh. Well, that's it for now. Okay, I'm Scott from the old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching. And so long for now. Wait for the cat.